I feel like every possible question I could ask about the making of this film and your process was more or less answered during my watching of it because you put you put up no walls for the viewer or try to create any sort of illusion or withhold anything. So I, I guess I'm just curious, like, how did you arrive at this thinking and approach where you're not trying to necessarily create something cinematic, but rather something honest and through your honesty, it feels cinematic. Yeah, I, I, I think, I mean, unexpected is, is definitely the right word. Um, you know, at, at the start of the pandemic, um, my, my wife and I, she's, she's my girlfriend at the time, but we moved, you know, from New York to be back home with family, just like so many like young Americans did during that time. Yeah. Um, so I had a lot of free time on my hands and I always knew I wanted to um, share my family's story, you know, and, and I always thought my way of doing that would be like, I would, I would write a script, um, mm. and, you know, I would, I would tell like a narrative version of it. I never intended to make a documentary about that, you know, because, you know, if you, if you think about my family story, like this Mexican American woman and this Cambodian refugee who, you know, survived the killing fields and came to this country with just a shirt on his back. I mean, these two passionate, hardworking individuals decide to go to Bedex, Michigan, of all places, open up a donut shop and fail at that for many years, attempt to change it into a restaurant, but it doesn't quite work out. But then as, you know, with Jacqueline's help, my oldest sister was able to turn the business around and, you know, not make it not only like a uh, the successful business it is today, but so much of like what the pinnacle of like what Bad X Michigan is as a community. Like, mm -hmm. That's just sort of the American dream. I always thought I, you know, I always wanted to share. So in those early days of the pandemic, like I started off by just like sitting down with my parents and just getting like this whole, you know, like oral history of like, how right. did this, how did we get to where we are today? Um, the other, the unexpected side of that was um, me being a, a bored, unemployed filmmaker and just doing what I did, which was, I'm always a kid with the camera growing up around my family. Like I, I just always, film special moments and always followed everyone around and you know i knew it was like a an interesting time in history i didn't know how long it would last i i think we all kind of thought you know this is gonna be a few weeks and we'll go back to normal clearly wasn't the case but you know regardless i i just wanted to like have like these like memories and moments to hold on to you know it's like i guess like cinematic home videos right because like i yeah. haven't been camera rig and, and i'm just you know filming these really special moments but where like I began to realize I was making a documentary, I think it was like around the time of the Black Lives Matter movement, like mm -hmm. right after the mm -hmm. death of George Floyd. Um, and and I started editing and what, that this footage all I had together, and I realized like oh like I have all of this er, these early days of the pandemic interviews of just my parents just you know telling their whole story, and then I have like all these like home videos. It's like whoa, there's a, you know, sort of a dichotomy going on here between the history of the American dream and like keeping that dream alive just in the face of everything 2020 brought at us, you know, a, a pandemic, right. racial reckoning, a, a really divided, you know, country. Um, that was, you know, all unexpected, you know, all unexpected element to my family's story. I mean, I don't think any of us predicted any of that would happen. Yeah. For sure. You know, throughout we see how your your family challenges your thinking with this film, but what was that journey like for them in, in watching this back? I'm not sure if you were sharing or discussed much of what happened. I'm not sure how much they were involved in like your, your creative process or did you just kind of like completely separate the fact because I don't know, like I, I'm kind of getting into like the direct uh, or documentarian's mindset that you probably had to adopt when when you reached that point that you're talking about because at that Black Lives Matter protest, you get really up there. Like you get really close and I'm sure you have to just kind of, what do they call it? Like view viewfinder uh, confidence where you're just kind of looking within that and you're just focusing on what's happening within there. And then once you kind of break beyond that, it's kind of overwhelming to kind of maybe take in everything of what's going on. Right, right. I mean, like, look, the reason why I'm so close in that moment was that I, I was just so angry. They, yeah to ruin this you know these these neo-nazis ruin this like beautiful 
moment like a history in time in Bad Axe, Michigan, where, you know, something like a Black Lives Matter protest would ever happen. Um, so the reason why I get close is, is that it's not really to be a documentarian. It was just like, I wanted to show these, like these guys, like, I'm not scared of you. And like, all I have yeah. is this camera to, to capture you with, but like that to me was like a, a weapon in itself. But, uh, but going back, you know, like my family is like, um, involvement in the creative process, I will say that they, they were very involved. I mean, mm -hmm. I, I knew I had to, you know, I, I didn't need their permission to ever film them because again, that's, that's just what I always did. It was, I think that's what lends it, the film to its intimacy is that it feels like the camera's never there. And it's because to them, it never is. It's just me there, but w where I, I did need to earn their, their trust was in the editing process when you begin putting this footage together and they begin seeing themselves like as these characters on screen, like these imperfect characters with flaws and with arcs and, you know, going through their own journeys through the duration. So I shared, I shared early cuts of, of mm. the film with them. I will say in those early cuts, I was, I was very angry as just a, a, a person of just what was going on with everything in, in our country. I mean, I think in those early edits, I wanted to be like a, you know, a filmmaker that got on my soapbox and, you know, <laughs> preached to the world of like all the world's issues with, with no solution to it. And my family, they disagreed with that. They're like, what are you doing? Like, you're not telling our story anymore. Like you're trying to do like something different, something bigger. And it was a lot of like tough conversations, like back and forth. And it was really with their help like i real they like they helped me realize like remind me why i was making this in the first place like why did mm. i why did i ever pick up the camera and start filming these home videos and it, it was because like i just genuinely loved them and wanted to like share our story because i knew it was an important american story to share and that's when i really began to like really just focus on the personalness of the film you know like really just focus on telling our family story and our perspective and our experience and i think like thankfully like having them involved in that process and by doing that um as personal as a film is those these universal themes i wanted to make sure that were addressed in the film come out in such a uni like more of a universal organic way that doesn't really feel like it's being preached to an audience, but rather it's just like, no, I just want to share a family story. And like, this is what it's like for us living in Bad Axe, Michigan. Um, right. So it was, it was a collaborative process and don't be wrong. Everyone had their own ideas. You know, you I have a very opinionated family, as you see, yeah. and everyone had their own ideas, but it was really listening to a little bit of what everyone was saying and being reminded of why I even picked up the camera in the first place and it had to come from a place of love and i you know i think the film does at the end of the day and and i think that's why it's starting the the dialogue and, and the conversations that it is yeah was it a struggle for you when you're you're holding the camera and you're seeing arguments happen and you're seeing like people hurting each other um, as every family does when they have an argument with each other but you know naturally maybe as a brother you kind of want to step in be like kind of put the camera down but did you have to yeah. fight that impulse a little bit yeah i definitely had to fight that impulses um uh, several of those moments and you know it's because you know my role in the family is, is similar to that of my mom's where we're kind of the mediators and mm. you, she's the one that calms my dad down and, and i'm the one that will talk to jacqueline and so you know in those moments your mind kind of goes to the documentary or like filmmaker director mode, like thinking like, oh, like I, I think this is like somewhat important and I don't know if I should step in or not. And granted, like I, I always did after, you know, afterwards because, and that's usually how those arguments do play out. Like I tend to not get too involved in those until after when I can go like talk to Jacqueline or, or talk to my dad and be like, hey, like, you know, we need to talk about, you know, like, cameras down like you just just talk to me about what what you're feeling and stuff and um so yeah it, it was a bit of a struggle you know to balance those moments between like being filmmaker but also um uh being the brother being the son being the family member you know yeah yeah for sure are, are you prepared to share your family with everyone else like watching your father like hilariously cuss 
have a certain way about him, sing. Like I love it when he sings. And I, I love all your siblings. Like it, it's it it just wholeheartedly feels like I'm there and I want to follow up with them. And so naturally I'm just curious to kind of ask a general question. Would you consider a continuation of some sort if it felt right? Uh, yeah, I think I think it would really have to feel right. But I, I still film I still film my family all the time. Um, yeah, again, because these are just home videos. So I th I think it would be something that would take some time, maybe years, to reflect on and looking back at. I haven't stopped filming really, <laughs> um, and seeing if there's like a, a continuation of the story there. But it, it would just have to be the right time, and and you know would have to be the the right story to tell. Um, open to it. I mean, the footage continues. I'll probably continue to film my family for many more years to come. I don't know. Maybe there's something about the about the babies at the end, you know, yeah. 20 years from now. I don't know. I, I would be open to it. And it's something that would, I, I, I just know whatever film I, I do, you know, in my career, it, it has to have, um, uh, it has to come from the heart. And, you know, this one was, was definitely an example of that. So yeah, it's, it's certainly, I don't want to say no, you know, it's certainly a possibility. So yeah, it could be your own secret boyhood project or something like that. That's exactly right. Exactly. So we'll see. I mean, <laughs> yeah. uh, see what the, what happens with those babies and the humans they turn into. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, for those who have seen this, what has, what have been like the most meaningful discussions you've had surrounding what's here? Because you do just because of naturally of everything that's going on in the world, how it impacts your family, how it impacts you. Uh, you cover a lot of ground and I I feel like it just expands the fire within someone and leads to some very treasured exchanges. So I'm kind of curious about those exchanges you may have had. Yeah, I mean, it's 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 like several, I mean, because everyone has their own stories that they want to share after they get yeah. a chance. To I mean, we get a chance to show it to a lot of AAPI audiences, you know, um, at, at different festivals. And it's always so incredible when, um, you know, people from the AAPI, AAPI community come up to us afterwards and they're like, I feel so represented and I feel so seen on screen. Like my dad is just like, you know, your dad. And like, I'm just like Jack. It's, 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 it's really neat, you know, to hear like how, how similar we all are, even though how personal um, the, the yeah. film is. Um, you know, and, and having said that, I mean, we've have, we've had the opportunity to to share this film and bad X as well too with community members there mm. um back, back you know this past may um we ended up doing did i share the story on this interview i'm sorry i've no I've, no you haven't i actually was gonna curious if you were gonna no, if you no, okay, I, I, that little sure. bad X I've, I've been doing back to back and, and i like sharing this story but you know back in may this past year we we held a, a, a screening for the community bad X and it, it was really a screening for like a lot of the crowd funders who mm. donated to the campaign to you know help make this film possible because right. the community addicts did really rally behind it um but we ended up having you know 20 or 30 open seats um that we just opened to the public and mm. uh the majority of people that filled those seats were actually the skeptical people i mean these were the people mm. that or leaving comments on social media and, and stopping my mom in Walmart, telling her they don't think they can support the restaurant anymore because of what I'm doing. I mean, for one reason or, or another, you know, probably out of curiosity, um, these individuals showed up to that screening that night. And I mean, I remember being so anxious because I didn't know if people were gonna walk out or, or say things or, you know, I, I was really, really nervous. Um, but after the, the, you know, the credits rolled and the lights came up, like the film was, met with so much love from mm. everyone in that room um people being so thankful that we told the story and in fact you know all those skeptical people came up to us afterwards and they said i'm sorry they mm. i'm sorry for judging your family and your story before i had the chance to to see it myself and like as a filmmaker um that was that's a moment I'll always remember because you know as as filmmakers we like to believe like our films have the power to change the world and yeah I, I don't know you know I I think I was a bit cynical at that time where I don't know if I truly believe that but hearing these people you know 
being able to look at us as like their fellow community members, like as humans, right? And being willing to open up their hearts and their mind and, and you know, even their checkbooks. Some people even donated afterwards. They got a chance mm-hmm. to see it. They were willing to have a conversation. And like, that's the first step to change is being able to just see each other as humans and just communicate with one another. I think that's something we lost so much, you know, over the past few years in, in our country. Yeah. Um, and, and that was like truly just an incredible moment seeing the seeing the response from those individuals that, you know, even I wrote off where I was like, I don't even know if, if they're going to relate with the story, but hearing them say like, oh, even, even me, even I saw myself in your family. Like it was, it was really special knowing that, like, I was able to make something that, that universal through such a personal story. Yeah, that's, that's really special. Th- thank you for, for sharing that. I really do appreciate it. But uh, I also have to ask about getting access to some of that archival footage. You have news reports. You have, as you've said earlier about getting, kind of going through some of that earlier uh, home footage and just the process of working with your editors to piece that together. Where Did you at all separate yourself to kind of allow this outsider perspective to come in? Or did you put on that outsider hat in the forming of it in the edit. I mean, to be honest, it was really hard for me to ever put on an outsider hat because uh-huh. it, it's just, it was such a personal story, um, you know, clearly, but I, I, that's where I have to credit like my editors and my collaborators because they were able to give that outside perspective because the, the film touches on so many, so many different themes, right? And for me, it's just like, I want to make sure these themes are are coming through in the most personal way, but also that like an audience will understand the nuance of all of it. And that is credit to my editors for really helping to um, force me to take that step back and look at the film from, you mm. know, an outside perspective, you know, as an audience member and be able to um, really like hone in, like, yes, on the personal of it, but also like, is this making, is this going to resonate and make sense with people outside of my family? Because it all makes sense to, to my family, right? But yeah. will it make sense to, to someone like you, right? Um, so it, it really was a um, very tedious editing process to uh, to have the film arrive to where it's it's currently at. So yeah, I can't take full credit for that. Um, that's That's something, you know, very much it took a collaborative process between everyone yeah yeah i meant to ask on the last question uh, did you is that little bad axe theater still open that has like two it, movies yeah, it's, still, it's still open in fact i i think it's it's showing for two weeks at the bad axe oh. theater uh, when it opens on november 18th so that's yeah, awesome. and I, I know the theater owner uh really well and he, he's so happy and he's someone who honestly you know um he, he's someone who has completely different views than myself. And even after he got a chance to see this film, he's so excited. He's like, I, I need to show this uh, for at least two weeks, you know, as long as I can. So that's awesome. Uh, I know we're about to wrap up it within a minute, but what what part of the film do you creatively feel most proud of? And what part do you personally feel most proud of? Ooh, that's a that's a good question. Um, I'll start with the Gosh, I, I I think it's kind of the same question. I I I think it's the same answer. Same answer. Yeah. For me, it was really weaving together this theme of generations and the turning of the leaf for the next. Yeah. I mean, it, it was so important for me to explore the history in the past of Cambodia, and have my grandma's presence feel you know, yeah, come through throughout the, the process of you know entire. Um, runtime of the film and I think it does and I think with the ending of the film you know seeing that baby come um, to me it was just like oh like this is there could be no other ending because it's all of this is possible because of this strong woman who came to this country as a widow with six children and like fought so hard to to make a better life for her family, which has now resulted in, you know, 40 plus people in our family, all because of this one woman. So yeah, yeah. I, th- I think that's both personal and creative that I, I'm most proud of. Yeah, as you should be. Well, 
this was very meaningful for me. Uh, thank you so much for making it and sharing it with everyone. And I, I just look forward to where you go from here. Um, and again, please give your everyone a hug, please. Oh, Come visit the restaurant sometime. I mean, I, I'll I, have I, to do that. I'll like for real, we'd we'd love to love to have you there. Um, no, we we always try to invite people, and people do come. Like they they are like, oh, we came from like Ohio or whatever just to come to your restaurant. So, <laughs> um, no, please come by, and I, I'll absolutely let them know. But thank you for having me, Preston. Really appreciate yeah. it.